Do you have a whole load of stencils that you don't know what to do with? Or have you used stencils before, but only in the same way? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five different ways to use your stencils to create some really exciting art. Welcome to the Alternative Art School with me, Kate Field, your gentle art teacher. It's Friday, so it's Friday art. I do release tutorials on a Monday as well for Doodle Club. So if you'd like to join that one, come along. It'd be so nice to have you here. Thank you so much for all the lovely comments. Really, really appreciating that. And if you want to join our Facebook group, which is so friendly and supportive, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lovely, safe, place to share ideas and thoughts and to support each other in our artistic journey. The link is below. So this Friday, this is what we're going to do. And weather update, the sun is shining. Yay! Let's go. I use stencils a lot in my work. I like the versatility and I like how you can create some very interesting effects very quickly. So I'm just going to show you a few examples of some of the pieces where I have used stencils over the last few months. And I'm going to show you all of these techniques. I've just put my little, little tabs in here so I can flick to the pages where I have used um, stencils in my art journal. Look at these pages and as always in my sketchbook some are finished and some are not. Quite liking this one. I did this one last year. This is one that was a uh, last summer and I've been I've used felt tip pens, acrylic pens, a bit of watercolour with the stencils. And I really want to express just how versatile they are and all the different things you can do with them. And then most recently, I did, let's just adjust, this series of pieces looking at sort of abstract ideas and then how to use various stencils within that. So the first bit that we're going to do is I'm just going to show you some of the materials. I like to use the plastic or silicon based stencils. They are extremely hard wearing. I've had these for, for ages. Some of them I've had for probably 10 years. Some are a little bit newer. Some I use frequently and you can see that some of them have got a bit stained, but they wash up in hot soapy water. You can just wash them and then you can use them again and again. But using the flexible stencils are the ones that give the best results, I think. But you might have a different opinion and that's fine. I like to use a variety of different paper, including tissue paper, photocopier paper, some rice paper. Oh, this one's got stuck. Oh, this was a demonstration I did yesterday. That's why it's got stuck because it's still wet. <laughs> and yes, yeah, copier paper. I'll use cartridge paper, anything really. And depending on what finish you want will be dependent on what materials you use. So in this tutorial, we're going to use a variety of different medium, um, different media, just so that I, you can see the versatility of using stencils. So I'm going to be using um, Polychromos pencils, which are just beautiful. This is my second bottle of this. One pound it cost me, ready mix paint. It's so good. Got it from The Works if you're in the UK. I'm sure that people in other parts of the world will have a kind of a cheap art supply shop. Use it, use, it's brilliant. And my, one of my favorite abstract acrylic paints, 
acrylic pens my Paul Robins watercolour and some ordinary crayons. We're also going to use a graphite pencil but I can't find that at the moment. So we're going to start with colouring pencils and this lovely flower design and this is the easiest and probably the most common way of using a stencil. You can use masking tape to tape it down or you can just use your other hand and I'm just going to use some of these flower patterns and all I'm doing is going around the shape with my sharp pencil. Taking, taking my time. Again, this is one of those lovely techniques that's quite relaxing because you don't have to think about it too much. <laughs> so you can put some music on, you can just relax. It's very lovely. And when you have a multiple stencil like this one, you can just use a bit of it. Again, there, there are no rules really. And you do the things that you like, the things that are appealing to you. So I'm just picking up a few of these outer petals as well as we start this very simple technique. I'm just going to lift that off so you can see. So I've got my my shape there. I'm going to be using some sunshine colours. So these ones, the warm, warm colours with a little bit of, of pink and then I'm going to add green a little bit later. And with this I'm going to start to put in some tone. Just sort of gradually building up the tone on this one. These lovely colours. And uh, you can just choose your stencil, choose what colours you want to do. And do this along with me. Loving that. Let's just put that one like that. Then I'm going to go in with my orange over the top. And again, I'm, I'm not pressing down hard with this. I'm just picking this up and going around, blending the colours. These Polychromos pencils really do blend beautifully well. And uh, Faber-Castell don't actually sponsor this. I'm just, they're, just, they're just my favourites. Perhaps, perhaps they will sponsor me one day. That would be nice. <laughs> there we go. I'll just put that one in there as well. So have you joined the, uh, the Doodle Club yet on uh, Facebook? Know, we've got I think we've got about 60 members now which is fantastic it's hugely supportive it's just lovely really really friendly place I'm loving it it's uh yeah everything that I wanted it to be really so uh, the link is in the description if you want to join let's uh let's pop that one in there so it's a very very simple design using the pencils I'm going to do a few more I will come back and show you what I've done and then how I would finish off this experimental page. So I've done a few more flowers and I'm now going to introduce another stencil. This is like a sunburst and I really like it. So I'm just going to pop my little sunburst up here. And it's going to go exactly the same technique. I'm going to go all the way around on here. So just keep it still so you can put masking tape down if you want to. 
and you don't have to do all of what's on the stencil you just use part of it and try out different different things to see see what works for your particular style and for your experiment because that is really what I'm encouraging you to do is to play because I just want to see see what happens and as with all experiments <laughs> some some will be successful and some won't that and I'm going to go all the way round. So I've done my little star, no, sunburst, my little sunburst here and I might do a little bit bit more on that but you have got the idea haven't you using colouring pencils with your stencil. At the end of the, of the video I'll show you how I finished this one off and now let's move on to the next one. The next one we're going to be using watercolours I'm using my Paul Rubens watercolour um, palette. Very, very vibrant colours. And if you are watching this before the 23rd of May 2024, you can pick up a 10% discount if you want to. The uh, codes are in the description. Now, I am just putting very quick very basic wash it's using these colors you see how how far vibrant the colors are love it but you can use whatever watercolors you want of course you can put that like that now in the in this video <laughs> This tutorial I'm going to be using the same stencil but I'm going to be introducing other stencils as well so in the previous one we had this flower one with the sunburst I'm going to have the flower one again and introduce another stencil I'm going to be using my soft brush these are used for makeup as well as uh, for for art it's quite quite good to look in the makeup department of uh, oh, the supermarket or the drugstore and just brushing those in and see this lovely effect that's happening the trick with stencils and paint is to keep it quite dry if you make it too wet then the the um, image sort of bleeds and actually that can be really good so it could be quite a could create quite an interesting effect but it might not be what you want let's put that one down there you see what's what's happening here on the page and again I'm not using the whole stencil I'm just picking out some of the bits that I like. Again, I'm going to go across, across my whole page. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit wet and then take, oh, that's, yeah, that's what happens. There's my tissue. Here we go. There. And I'm going to kind of bring in some more orange. Oh, that see that that's what happens when it gets too wet so I need to just dry that one off just step that, that across there I'm just going to take the moisture out of that there we go and let's put that one back there leave that to dry just for a little bit let's go into there so if like me <laughs> you realized it was too wet you just have a bit of tissue ready. So I'm doing these quite faint. Don't worry about that because we, we will go over that later. Because I quite like the subtle pattern 
that is happening on here. And you can make it as complex as you want, but I'm liking what is happening with these, these shapes. I'm doing some just where we've just got half of the flower and some where it's just where we've got a bit more. Like that. Let's do another one over here. So I'm getting a, a bit of a, a kind of a meadow feel. <laughs> <laughs> like I did in an earlier, earlier video, actually, when I was doing my wildflowers. If you haven't checked that one out, you might like that one. Thank you for all your lovely comments. I do read them all. And it's, it's just lovely how, how very positive people are. And uh, yeah, it's really nice hearing your, your comments and your feedback. So thank you. For those who've really taken time to write a thoughtful comment it, it's really it really is appreciated thank you right i'm now going to use one of my favorite stencils which is just a series of circles and holes i'm going to be using my soft brush and i've just put some water sprayed onto my watercolors and then what I'm going to do now is whoops, just move that like that. Just create some of these circles. You can see this pattern. And again, a good composition will have some of the elements that you use repeated repeated somewhere else in your design. So have a think about that and it could be you know, the, an element that you've repeated and it could be you've done the same element but in a different colour and that works well as uh, you know it really does um, give it a bit of cohesion. I'm just sort of bringing in those like that. And I'll just do a few little more, like that. How's the weather where you are? I haven't, I haven't talked about the weather <laughs> for a while anyway. We have, had, we have had some sunshine and it's been beautiful. So very much enjoying that. And I live by the sea, so I'm very lucky to be able to pop down to the beach go. So that is the technique for using watercolour paints and a stencil. So the third one we're going to be using acrylic paint and we are going to change the mood quite substantially actually. I'm going to be still using this one that I used in the previous one but I'm going to be introducing another stencil as well. But the first thing we're going to do is to put a little bit of of the acrylic paint and a bit of poster paint as well I've put here as well kind of here just dabbing it on to the page I'm going to be doing stuff on this side as well a bit of card I'll just tear that a bit actually and then I'm just going to scrape some of these down look at that this is what I love. I love using acrylic paint. Just to create a bit of a background. Scrape that across there. See, but see how easy that was to do. Don't be afraid. Just uh, put, put some paint on the page and see what happens. that across. Yeah, that's going how I wanted it to. 
So if you haven't liked and subscribed and you think that this is something that you might like to see more of, then please do that. That would be lovely. Oh, here we go. Putting these vibrant colours, making the marks. I'm not using any water. This is paint directly onto the page. I'm um, using a bit of card like that. And I am going to leave that to dry for maybe 10 minutes. So I'm going to go and grab a coffee. Well, I had a very nice cup of coffee and sat outside. It was lovely listening to bird song. It was, yeah, really, really beautiful. Right, back to work. <laughs> it's, I'm using the same um, holes. I do like this one. I really do. And I'm going to use a tiny bit of black with some white to create a dark grey. And again, I'm going to move that there. I go straight in with this one over the top of the background. Really liking that. Let's uh, add a little bit over here. Same in this side, I'm going to add a little bit more white up here. The good thing about these stencils is they are very easy to clean, and I use them over and over again. also use a sponge and you could do that and then the next stencil I'm going to use is another textured one I'm going to use this the bricks and this time I'm going to take a bit of pink I've still got a bit of black and grey on that sponge so it won't be quite as vibrant Put this sort of bricks here. See that there? And you see that grey coming through with the pink tinge. Lift that up. Oh yeah, that's that's what I wanted. And I was gonna do that down here as well. Just pick up a little bit of pink. So not quite as vibrant, which is what I wanted. Yeah, I'm liking that. The same over this side. Perhaps, yeah, with that kind of faded, a little bit faded. And then I'm going to do a bit up here with the grey and the pink. Again, quite a faded look loving that so far so i'm going to introduce a third stencil now with these angled lines and i'm going to mix a bit of the bright orange with the black and i'm just going to take this little bit here And just add a little bit of this stencil there. You see it's just kind of fading out. I'm going to do the same over this way. Again, you can hold the stencil down with your hand like I do, because I like to work quite quickly. Or you could use masking tape to hold it in place or paper clip, something like that. Add 
another bit there, liking that. And then a bit over here. Yeah, this is this is coming together quite well. I'm now going to add a bit of drama. So I'm going to introduce another stencil. Um, this is a fairly new one. I haven't had this one long and I quite like it because it looks like shattered glass. I thought that could be quite fun in this kind of urban type idea. And I'm using black just a little bit. Like that, yeah, liking that. So I, I get quite excited when I work with stencils. <laughs> because although I kind of know what's going to happen, it's always uh, a little bit, a little bit of a surprise. Yes, I'm liking that too. So you can see a real contrast with using these colours, the bright neons to begin with, and then building um, texture on top. Same sorts of um, ideas of repeating the pattern in various different places. I think this needs something here. So I might put another bit of shattered shards, but in grey. So with this, this piece, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I didn't meticulously plan what I was going to do because I wanted there to be a bit of spontaneity. Um, I do like to work like that, even on um, canvases where I have done quite a bit of preparation. I still like to sort of just pop in a little element of um, surprise. I'm going to turn this one upside down now. And now I'm going to use white. Still got quite a bit of the grey on the sponge. I'm just going to pick that up there. Like in that. That's going to do a few little ones there as well. And that's it for using the stencils with acrylic paint so you can see quite a contrast to this one <laughs> using watercolors and this one using acrylics so the next one i'm going to be using my jelly plate i use my jelly plate quite a lot i use it for all sorts of things when i'm trying out ideas when i've got some thoughts in my head and not quite sure where I'm going with them and in this experiment we're just going to dive straight in. Now I am going to do a full tutorial on how I use a jelly plate. There are some fantastic YouTubers <laughs> who do wonderful jelly plate demonstrations and I'll, I'll link some of my favourites in the description because I learn a lot from them but I wanted to have this kind of creamy type of colour. I'm going to go in with some of the stencils that I've used already. I'm going to take that and I'm going to be using a whole variety of different paper. I've got some rice paper here, I've got some tissue paper and I've got some newsprint and I actually really like this. <laughs> it's, it's got a like fleck to it. This is um, newsprint that's used for wrapping up um, crockery in shops. It's very cheap and this is uh, British made and because I, if I can buy locally then I will. Sometimes it's just not possible and obviously you get your first, your first print there. Bring that one up just pop another one down there. Same piece of paper. Put that down. 
and I'm going to be using these in collage. So if you haven't seen my collage tutorial, then have a look at that. I did a collage workshop in um, Somerset this week. It's an art, an art club. It was great fun. Lovely, lovely people. Let's look at that. So we're starting to get some very interesting textures. Now I'm just going to keep going with this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to clean the plate because I just want to have this idea of multiple layers. Add some pink and white. I'm going to stick to these colours for the moment. Let's do this. I also use um, photocopier paper. Let's do that like that. I'm going to go back to my shattered glass. I'm going to put that there. When I'm working with collage, I like the paper to be quite thin so that it's easier to then manipulate and to layer. I just gently pull that one off. Yeah, I'm liking that. <laughs> it's getting quite a Quite a grungy feel to that. And those darker marks are where I had used the um, the stencil for the acrylic and I hadn't washed it. And you get, these, these are serendipitous moments, aren't they? You're not quite sure what is going to happen. Right, but it starts now to add some darker black and a little bit of white over there. Once we start to put together some of these. You don't want to have too much paint on the gel plate because it won't work. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our flowers. So we're gonna pop that one there. I'm going to take this one that I did a few moments ago and I'm going to lay it over the top. Ah, and then I'm going to pull that off and you get, ah, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Definitely do something with that. Lift that one up. Now I know that this is going to look gorgeous and I'm going to put it onto here. Again, multiple layers. And this is where your, yeah, that's it. Your stencils will start to be much more unique and you'll be able to do, do so many things with these collage pieces, but we could also do individual pieces and I'll do that now. So I've put down some blue. I'm just going to put a little bit of pink on here as well, just as a, just as a, it would just come out as a hint, which is what I want to do. I'm going to go back to my bubbles or whatever they are. I do like them. I'm going to put those there and then I'm going to get my star or sunshine First, I'm going to put that there. And the first print I'm going to take is on a piece of this um, newsprint, like that. And I will use that later, but what I'm really interested in 
is this print that's going to be appearing here. It's going to get a little bit more there. Let's put that, press that down like this. And then I've got some watercolour paper that I'm just going to press down really hard. Now I like to use my hands or oh, other people might use another brayer to rub into it. I'm just going to rub in there like this and then I'm going to pull that off for that piece there and I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to work into it. And I'm going to do another one similar. You're using my um, rectangles. Pop that on that. A bit of rice paper this time. Just to get that first. So I do like it, it's come out really well. Lift that one up there. And now I'll put my shattered glass ones just on the edge there. Pressing it down. That's come up really well. Let's just lift that one up and I'm going to take a print of this and I'm going to print it directly into my sketchbook, placing it down on there and then just pressing really hard. <laughs> so this is the first image in the sketchbook which I'm going to be doing some more work on. Pop that over there and I'm going to come back to this, leaving that to dry just a little bit. Start to put some pink, a little bit of white, push these over like this. that and then what I'm going to do is go back to this one again multiple layers and it's where you get it gets very interesting and you start to do that I'm just gonna put that one there Pulling that one off, I'm going to go to my bricks, that, that's just some there as well, like that, and now I'm going to just use some copy paper, place that over the top, really press down. So I want to get all of the layers and with all sorts of printing, any sort of printing, you're never quite sure what is going to happen. I'm just going to pull this up gradually bringing up that and I am liking that very much. I'm going to leave that to dry and then do some more work on the top of that. So with this one I've put some white and black. I'm going to put this shattered glass one. I really wanted to show you how you can use the same stencil and how 
just the methods and the materials that you use and the colours that you use create something really, really interesting. So I'm getting that, loving that. Just going to pull that one off there. Let's do another bit over this way. Push that there. that and then lay another piece of newsprint over there so hopefully by now you're having lots and lots of ideas of what you could do with your stencils let's just pull that I do like that love loving the textures there and these techniques you can use in your own way in your own style and they will be completely unique and they will be wonderful and if you'd like to share what you've been doing then perhaps you'd like to join the facebook group it is such a friendly place it's just lovely anyway the link's below and it's really nice and we have i think we have about 60 members now which is really really lovely I just had some leftover paint, so I thought I would uh, just use the leftover paint on the jelly plate. I've got this one, which was a bit of my newsprint paper. And I've not put a stencil on there at all. I just want to pick up the, the texture of the paint. <laughs> yeah, liking that. So the last stencils that I'm going to use for this painting uh, part of this video <laughs> Uh, letter, uh, letters and numbers which I think are very very interesting and I use typography a lot in my work I did a whole tutorial on how I use typography if you haven't checked that out you could have a look at that now this is the one that I did earlier I left it to dry it took about 20 minutes or so to dry and now I'm going to go over the top in this grey Still kind of continuing this um, sort of grungy feel, which uh, I think is really effective. Just pop that there. So I hope you're getting some ideas of what you could do. Now that was a bit wet, so it's going to smudge a little bit, but that's okay. Let's just lift that one. No, that's okay. That's that's okay. And the last thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to put some big, big number on it. Let's just put that there and pick up the pink and the white. Holding that down carefully because it's a larger space. fades out with this sort of pinky grey. Lift that up. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted for that one. Happy with that. Let's move that one to one side. Next one was this shattered glass. I'm going to do the same sort of thing. Do some white over the top, just going to do a few, just in that corner, lift that up, liking that, put that one there, I think I'm going to leave that one to dry, and now I'm going to come back to, this is the one on my watercolour paper, I'm going to turn it up this way because so I want to use this space here. Place that there. So again, I'm going to use a sort of pinky grey. Just in that little bit there. That's the idea that I wanted. I'm sort of building up 
some of these numbers. And then I might develop this further with maybe some acrylic pens, maybe something like that. I think that could be interesting. Those in there. And that's it for the painting bit. <laughs> that's it for the painting bit. Well, you know what I mean. So I'm now going on to the last bit of this tutorial on creative use of stencils. So for this last one, I'm using a solid graphite pencil. It is the best thing to use. And I'll also be using some crayons, but we're going to start with the graphite. And this, this will take you back, I think, <laughs> because we're going to put the stencil underneath the paper. And we're going to rub. Who remembers doing things like this when you're at school? I certainly do. And I loved it then because it's so quick. So I'm getting this, which is which is really nice. And yeah, that's nice in itself. But we're artists, aren't we? So we want to do some other things. So I've just moved the stencil a little bit to create something a little bit more. Just building that up here. Liking that. And this works really well with the textured pieces. So I'm just going to put that. Look at that. That's fun, isn't it? For the whole page. Now oh, I did this with a, um, a class couple of weeks ago where I was doing um, textured rubbings um, and they were quite little and um, it was just brilliant because they started looking around the whole room to see what else they could use to make rubbings from which was just wonderful how lovely so I'm going to do a few more of these just so that you can get the idea this lovely sort of neutral collage papers. We'll do that. I'm just going to put this one underneath there as well. So we get multiple layers. And I hope that uh, some of you are now thinking, oh, this is exciting. That was really good. I showed this technique to my dad this week and he's in his 80s and he's been an artist all his life but some of the things that he used to be able to do he can't either his vision isn't as good as it was or his dexterity isn't as good and I thought I'm going to get him to do some stencil work and some rubbing and oh my goodness he absolutely flew with it and really enjoyed it so that was good that was a go dad <laughs> So I think that we can um, become a little bit despondent, can't we, when we get older and we realise we can't do the things that we used to be able to do. But we don't have to stop creating at all. Oh, that went a bit the other way. This star one's nice. I wasn't going to use the star one, and then I just saw it on the side and I thought, yeah, let's do that. So you can see by doing a rubbing, you can create some very, very interesting and textured pieces with the graphite. And I'm just going to show you what happens when you use just an ordinary crayon. So again, I've put my textured piece and I'm just using the newsprint paper. And I will do some rice paper as well. Now, this, these are just ordinary crayons, children's crayons. Nothing fancy. But look at this. Look at the sort of patterns you can get. Let's just move that over there a little bit. You could try all sorts of things. I'm going to try one of the other ones that we used earlier. I can find it. Here we go. The um, the sunburst one. Let's just pop 
that there just so that you can see the effects and obviously when you start to put different colors um, onto the page you're going to get different effects but i know there's some of you who have um, children and grandchildren and you like to do art with them and if they're very little this is just brilliant very very quick very effective have a really good fun so i'm just putting together blues there and I will do another one with different colours and show you a slightly different technique. So I'm using Chinese rice paper, calligraphy paper, which is very fine. And it's lovely to write on, to paint on, to put ink. It's quite absorbent, but oh my goodness, it is lovely. So I'm just using my crayons again. These are just ordinary children's crayons. There is nothing fancy about them at all. So I'm going to put some of my sort of oranges and reds. And a bit of, oh, where's that gone? And a bit of pink. And I've got this, this stencil underneath. Let's start to put this in as a back, as like a background. Adding different colours like this. Oh, so if you haven't liked or subscribed and you think you'd like to watch more of my tutorials, please do that. So it does help other people to find me, apparently. I think that's how it works. <laughs> and it's, uh, Putting that, that. So we've got this sort of sort of waves and swirls, and then I'm going to go back to this one that I started with. I'm going to put that underneath as well. I'm going to go in with a pink and put this over the top. And now this time I'm rubbing really quite hard and using the flat. Look at that. I do like this stencil, it's very, very pretty. And now I'm just going to come around and do this one. This one over here. And again, we can move, move the stencils over to get this idea of layering. Get multiple layers. And I really hope by now you're thinking, ooh, what if I could do that? Or what, what would happen if I did that? <laughs> and uh, that is the voice of a true artist. <laughs> That kind of what if. I love that. And just having those swirly bits underneath just gives it that little bit of background. And I'm now thinking, because this is this is just lovely, lovely tissue paper. And I use these um, to create wrapping papers for friends' birthdays and things like that. It's uh, very unique and very pretty. There we go. But I'm sure you can think of lots of other things that you could do. So, there we are. So, five different ways of using your stencils. Let's have a recap. Oh, that wasn't the first one, was it? This was the first one, using colouring pencils. And I might add some more tone to this and put some petals and some leaves and flowers, more flowers, that, that kind of thing. 
Then we looked at using watercolours to create an interesting textured background. Then we went a little bit urban grunge, didn't we, with our neons. I do like this, I have to say. I do like it. <laughs> and with using acrylics. Then we did our jelly plates. And I've got some of those that we did just here using the jelly plate. And um, this one I particularly like. I, I like um, how the flowers are coming through. I like that very mu much. And then finally, we did our crayons and our graphites, which I've put somewhere else. <laughs> Here they are. Here they are, the crayons and the graphite doing our rubbings. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I really enjoyed it and I didn't get too messy, so that was quite good, which is very unusual for me. I really hope that you will join me again next time. Take care. Bye bye.